Greetings from the Appalachian Christian Center, Peterstown, West Virginia. I am Pastor Michael Biggs. Certainly good to be back with you again today, uh, sharing God's Word. I'd like to read out of the book of Numbers, chapter 14, reading verses 33 through 35. And your sons shall be shepherds in the wilderness, forty years, and bear the brunt of your infidelity until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness, according to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, forty days, for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely forty years, and you shall know my rejection. I am the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do so to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me in the wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Here, uh, the story is when the children of Israel had uh, entered into the promised land, uh, they had sent the, support, the uh, uh, 12 spies in, uh, they had spent 40 days in the wilderness, or in the um, promised land, uh, spying out the land, they return, and uh, they are they have good news and bad news. They have good news is the land is exactly the way uh, God described it. It's a, a great place to dwell. But the bad news is the the people there are like giants and they compared themselves to grasshoppers in their sight and they said, We can't do it. They they turned against God and, and believed that God had just simply brought them out to this place to die. Uh, they refused uh, to enter in to the promised land. Uh, God vows to destroy them, but, but Moses intercedes. Uh, uh, God relents in destroying them uh, because uh, uh, the evil that this generation, uh, he said, will wander in the wilderness for 40 years. He, he told them one year for each day that the spies were in the land. And uh, he said they would wander in the wilderness until the, the faithless generation had passed away. And then he would take the younger generation into the promised land. So all those uh, older generation was going to pass away uh, except Joshua and Caleb, who were the two spies that, that believed God and tried to persuade the people to go in and possess the land. But they rebelled against them as, as well as Moses. So the, the children of Israel... They hear the news and they're not very happy, so they decide to go up and take the land that uh, God has promised them. But as the old saying goes, it was a day late and a dollar short. They failed, just as Moses had tried to warn them. He said that God will not be with you. And when they go to try to take the land, uh, they're... they're they fail, and many of them are destroyed. And, you know, like many people today, the children of Israel, uh, after they uh, heard this bad news that they were going to have to wander in the wilderness for 40 years till they passed away, they made a decision that they would go up and do what God had originally told them to do, that they would attack the enemy. They would go in and possess the land. You see, it was all about them, what they were going to do, what they could do. Uh, the children of Israel felt like that their works would make things right. And uh, they, they soon learned the lesson that no matter how good our works are, even with the greatest of intentions, they won't bring about the ble God's blessings. The blessing comes from obedience to God. Even though they did not like the coming judgment for their disobedience, that was their only alternative. And, and you know, when we're disobedient to God, there's a price that we have to pay, whether it's individually or whether it's as a nation. Um, we, we obey God and, and the blessings flow. God's word is, is contingent uh, upon following it, upon following him, upon following the leadership of the Holy Spirit, about being obedient to his word. And, and if we're not obedient to his word, we can't expect the blessings to, to flow upon us. Uh, the, their own, the only path that they could successfully follow was the path that God led them through the wilderness. Um, God, God instructed, he, he told them, he said, you, you know, he said, I'm going to lead you all these 40 years in the wilderness. He said, I'm going to do it for a purpose. He said, I'm going to do it to humble you. Uh, he said, I'm going to do it to test you. He said, I'm going to do it to find out what's in your heart, uh, whether you're willing to keep the commandments or whether you're not. 
And, and so he said, you know, you're going to become hungry, but he said, I'm going to feed you with a manna, something that your fathers uh, never knew about before. Uh, he said, I'm going to teach you that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And, you know, that's what we need to learn in, in our lives. We, 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 we don't live by the things that we consume. We don't live by the things that we do. We live by God's word. Uh, and it's important that we uh, take the word and we put the word into our hearts and and we learn to live by his words. He, he told him, I'm going to be with you through the, the 40 years that you wonder. He said, your garments will never wear out. Your feet will never swell. Can you imagine going for 40 years and, and never having to change a shirt or change a pair of pants because they never wear out? Walking through the wilderness. Now these people, they uh, may be sandals or maybe barefooted. You know, they didn't have shoes and boots and things like we have today. But he said, in, in this 40 years as you wander through this rugged wilderness land, your feet are never going to swell up. They're never going to bother you because I'm going to be with you. And, and he said, you're going to know in your hearts, you're going to know in your hearts that just like a father chastens his son, he said, I'm going to chasten you. And, and he said, it's important that you learn to keep the commandments, that you learn to walk in my ways and you learn to fear me. That's what God instructed him to do. And, and he went on to say, he said, beware that you don't forget the Lord your God. And you don't forget to keep his commandments, his judgments, his statutes. He said, don't don't forget to, to follow the commands that I give you. Because he, he went on to say that he said, if you do forget and you begin to follow other gods, you serve them and worship them. He said, I'll testify against you in that day and you'll surely perish. We need to learn to follow God, to follow his word, uh, whether it's as an individual or whether it's as a nation. We look and our, our nation is going in a direction that leads away from God. We have come to a place that we no longer want God's word to lead God and direct us. We, we don't want to acknowledge that, that our nation was founded upon the principles of God's word. Uh, you know, uh, Today, many, if not most, want to reject God's word as the authority uh, for us to live by and to use for governing our lives. We must be willing to follow God if we desire to live a successful life. If we want personally, if we want to be successful in life, you know, man looks at success in one way. God looks at success in another way. Man looks at success if how how we climb the corporate ladder. Uh, we look at success as how much money we earn, how much prestige or fame that we have. But that's not the way God judges success. God judges success by the things that we do for Him and how our life honors Him. God was with the children of Israel in the wilderness. He never left them alone for a, a single moment. He watched over them. He protected them uh, until that older generation, until they had passed away. That 40 years had been accomplished. Then he led this younger generation along with Joshua and Caleb uh, back to the promised land. And God expected his children, those who had survived the wilderness, to follow him. You see, the, the, the ones that had rejected God, had refused to, to believe that they could go in and possess the land. They all passed away, but there was two in that older generation who, who tried to talk the people into it. That was Joshua and Caleb. And you see, they were rewarded for that because, again, Joshua was the next leader. He took over after the death of Moses, and he was actually the one that led the children of Israel across the Jordan into the promised land because he believed God, he trusted God, he, he had that desire to follow God. The people just wouldn't listen, and he was rewarded for that along with Caleb. I believe God is still expecting his children to follow him today. You know, it doesn't matter the direction in which our world goes. God still expects us to walk that straight and narrow pathway. He expects us to follow him, to, to seek his leadership and guidance and direction in our lives. You know, as we recover from this pandemic, from the civil unrest and prejudice that we've seen in our nation in the last few months, let's turn back to God. Let's take a stand on his word 
even if we have to stand alone. Let's make sure that we stand for God. Just like the children of Israel, if we follow Him, we can expect His blessings. But if we turn from Him, we must expect His judgment. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank You for this day that You've given us. We thank You for Your many blessings. And Father, we pray that you help us to uh, stand firm on your word. Father, may we read and study your word and we, may we uh, uh, take it and, and apply it to our daily lives that we might live a life that would uh, be pleasing unto you. Father, no matter what the odds may seem, may we learn to trust in you, knowing that we're able, if we follow you, we're able by faith to walk in that path in which you've called us to walk. And Father, though the world may turn against us, they may turn their back upon us, they may hate us, they may come against us, Father, they may attack us. Help us to realize, Father, that when we stand for you, we'll be standing on, on the victorious side because you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And Father, all your word teaches us is that we must take a stand and you'll fight the battle for us. We ask your richest blessings upon your church. Give us the courage and the boldness to stand strong for you. And Father, we pray that our lives will bring glory and honor to you. Again, Father, we lift up our nation. We lift up our leaders. Uh, Father, we pray that, uh, Father, that they will listen to your voice as you try to help them make decisions and lead and direct them in the paths in which you would have our nation to go. And, Father, we pray that, that you would bring unity back to our nation. Help us to become that one nation under God. Uh, again, we just ask your richest blessings upon us. And, Father, we can pray that you continue to work in this pandemic. Father, we pray that this vaccination will will work. It will do its job. We pray, Father of God, that these, this virus will soon die down and we can get back to normal again, Father. We, we thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace and for your many blessings. Help us to be a blessing unto you. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And we do pray that you have a great day and God bless.